Good morning, what is going on everybody? This is the CryptoQ YouTube channel. And today I'm going to be covering Lima Finance. You can find them on Twitter at Lima Finance or their website, Lima Finance. We are gonna be covering what they are, uh, pretty much the basics of how they work. So as always, nothing in this video is financial advice or any type of means to tell you to buy or to sell. This is simply education and for educational purposes only. I am not a financial advisor. So jumping right into it, what exactly is it? Well, it's a basis trading protocol, which I will explain what basis trading is here in just a second. They are pretty much targeting a low risk, sustainable yield on Ethereum and hopefully soon USDC. Currently sitting at roughly of an APY at about 48% that will fluctuate as we will talk about here in a moment. Their goal is to pretty much democratize access to DeFi investment strategies. Now, before I explain some of the more things about what exactly basis trading is, why would you pick Lima? Well, they're going to be offering superior yields through something like 48% on Ethereum. You don't see that really anywhere. Uh, it's pretty tough just to say, hey, I'm going to lend you my Ethereum and you're going to pay me back 48% a year. I mean, that's uh, it's, it's a lot. They are market neutral. Pretty much they're going to do uh, neutral derivatives trading strategies. So they will be able to profit off of the market going up or down. They will have proven sustainability. It will be non-custodial and diversi diversification from lending and borrowing. So what exactly is basis trading? Well, it's known as cash and carry. Uh, it is actually used on the futures commodities markets uh, traditionally. And it's a way to profit off of the funding rates on different exchanges. In this case, they'll be using decentralized derivative exchanges like Perpetual Protocol. So the strategy that Lima is going to be implementing to a degree, and this can change, is say, for instance, uh, ETH USDC has had negative funding, which means that shorts are paying hourly fees to longs and vice versa. If it is positive funding, then longs will be paying hourly fees to shorts. Uh, their strategy for this would be sell all of the Ethereum that they receive for USDC at spot, move USDC over to Perpetual Protocol for collateral. They will then buy the same amount of Ethereum long contracts as the number of Ethereum deposited, and then collect the hourly funding rate on their long position and reinvest those funding rate payments into that position. So essentially what they're doing is they are going to be collecting payments from shorts or vice versa if positive funding from the longs and be in a short position to try to profit off those hourly payments and then compound that into that position they have already built out. Now, this is an example of some of their future strategies and their quote unquote real basis trading. Uh, this is an example, say they have 10,000 USDC and say Ethereum is priced at a thousand or it could really be any, you can adjust those prices as you wish. They will be checking for the funding. If it is positive funding, then shortering is going to earn fees. They will have two DEXs. So DEX one will receive 5,000 USDC and DEX two is going to receive 5,000 USDC. DEX one will buy X amount of Ethereum at spot and DEX two is going to get the short same amount of uh, Ethereum perpetual contracts using that 5,000 USDC as collateral. And every hour they're going to collect those funding fees or pay out if funding rate goes negative. So in the event that say they are short and the funding rate flips, they can be paying out instead of earning for a given time period. And also I wanna know if a user wants to withdraw their funds, they'll pretty much sell the amount of shares of ETH that is being requested from the user at spot and then close the equivalent amount of those short and or long contracts. What are some of the risks and fees associated with this? Well, of course, gas and slippage fees. So whenever you deposit and those assets are then ported over to whatever exchange you're going to be on, uh, the APY shown will actually be initially negative. Additionally, the strategies that are, they're going to be using rely on positive funding rates due to it historically being in the majority positive funding in this market, though they do note that in a pair market, there can be negative APYs. So keep that in mind, it is not a guaranteed return. Lima is also in beta and is unaudited. So there's always a lot of risk there 
as it is not officially out and has not been audited. And then for their fees, they will have no management fee, but they will have a performance fee, which currently is going to be 30% of the denominated profits. Lastly, I want to touch on what LUSDC is going to be. Pretty much it is a Lemma yield bearing USDC token, which will represent the underlying principle plus the yield that Lemma has generated for you. You will not get a LETH. So if you deposit ETH, you're not receiving L or a Lemma ETH, but you will instead receive a LUSDC that will represent also the current price of ETH and the earnings. And that can be seen within the withdrawal tab. Pricing for LUSDC, they are going to be using a P equals M divided by N, where P is the price of LUSDC, N is the number of LUSDC in circulation, and M is the amount that uh, Lima has in the form of USDC. Some of the impl implications of it, I completely butchered that, I do apologize, is that LUSDC price will not be impacted by deposits or withdrawals, uh, and you do receive less LUSDC than USDC due to the difference in the yield generating that will be occurring. So to wrap this up for you, overall, I am actually really excited for Lima. Now, this is probably a project that not many people are talking about, not many people have seen uh, or may not be aware of it. Uh, I believe it was a Latin DAO, a project I had covered previously, is actually voting to have them within their DAO. Personally, I, I do like the idea that a Latin DAO is trying to implement along with what Lima is going to be doing. I did put a tweet out before this video is going live to kind of give you guys a drop on what this video is going to be along with in my telegram i did put out what videos i will be releasing this week but i like lima finance i am not using them so keep that in mind i am not using them at this given moment also they do not have a token currently so that is something to watch for as it is a poss it might be possible that they go and make a governance token to decide on what the protocol does in the future so it may not be a bad thing and i might end up putting in some ethereum or usdc when it's out and try to maybe get an airdrop from them so that is something i want to note but overall i like it and i want to hear your guys thoughts down below so comment leave a like let me know what you think of lima finance or if you even heard of it before today and i'll catch you guys later